Good morning, everybody. How you doing? Nice to see you. Um, here's Reverend Sandy. Yes, good morning, everyone, and a welcome to Unity of Michiana Spiritual Center. Those of you who are here in the room, and we embrace those of you who are joining us via our live stream service. How wonderful it is to have this amazing technology. <clears throat> here at Unity of Michiana, we are a heart-centered, multi-generational, and a diverse spiritual community. a positive life approach on our spiritual journey. And our vision is a world united in loving acceptance, celebrating inclusivity, harmony, prosperity, and awakened consciousness. Ah, so as we just kind of breathe and as we gather here together today, we know that our heart has drawn us to be a part of this, this time, this moment of opening into and a, w a deeper awareness, a connection to infinite spirit, to God. And so we um, start our service by lighting our Christ candle, which honors and represents in each of you that light of the Christ consciousness within. And so as we take a moment in prayer, We center ourselves into this time and into this place, and we breathe. And in breathing, it realigns us with the natural rhythm of that which is life, the breath of God, the heartbeat of God. And as we relax into that, as we open ourselves to be receptive, we are indeed infilled with wisdom that comes from the connection to infinite spirit. And we know that we are all part of a greater wholeness. We are all part of a oneness. And that we each bring our own unique beauty and grace and design to be shared with each other. And so as we gather here together, in this actual room and across the miles uh, through the internet. We know that the energy of God knows no limits in space and time, and we are gathered all as one. And so, beloved Mother, Father, God, Divine Holy Spirit, we say thank you for the blessings of the activity of your spirit here today. And so we pray together. Amen. And now I'll invite our youth to come forward. I ask that you rub your hands together. We see you surrounded in the light of God. We see you surrounded in the light of God. And we hold you close in our hearts. And we hold you close in our hearts. Go and have a wonderful time, you guys. So I'll turn it over to you, John, for some wonderful music. So this is a song I wrote this, kind of how I feel, especially the last couple of days about the sun, sun being out and the buds blooming and everything. It's, it really is. I think it affects all of us in a positive way. So try to sing along and understand my point of view, I guess. <laughs> Sing a praise for the sunlight that made shine bright 
in our hearts. Hallelujah for the feeling, the life appealing, a new start. Search ourselves in a knowing time, consciousness side, freeing up our mind, and praise new life with open hearts. The spring arrives for a new start. Sing a praise for the sunlight. May it shine bright in our hearts. Hallelujah for the feeling, new life appealing to a new star. Yeah, hello. Thank you. Wasn't looking for applause, but that's cool. <laughs> and I need a little bit of segue because I set this up. <laughs> ah, I got to start over. This is my late night gig. <laughs> All right. Wake up and the sun is shining. Makes the world look bright. And all of the, the love come into my life today. My song of praise the bird are singing, singing with all their might. And all of the love and the love come into my life today. All of the joy and the love come into my life today. All of the joy and the love come into my life today. My heart is full, my eyes are open, everything is new. And all of the joy and the love come into my life today. One present, just one hour, it is true. And all of the joy and the love come into my life today. All of the joy and the love come into my life today. All of the joy and the love come into my life today. Come into my life today. Come into my life today. Um, that's it. I don't think we've done that song before, have we? Is that a new one that Unity has come out with? Uh, I think I did it once. Song, right? Oh, yeah. did you do it? Yeah. Well, it's a nice little. Yeah, it's like let's, thing. But let's I, go dance. But I, but I made the drum loop a couple days ago. Uh, so it lightened it up a little bit. It did. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, here at in Unity, we do have uh, an inspiration inspirational magazine for each day of the year and uh, it's called daily word and i will have tim come up and read daily word for us thank you reverend sam yeah. um today sunday april 16 2023 the word for today is world peace i live my vision for a peaceful world to bring about peace in the world i begin by paying attention to my first reaction when I, have, when I feel I have been treated unjustly. I do not allow my feelings, excuse me, I do not deny my feelings, but neither do I allow anger, 
envy, or other negative feelings to take control of my response. I feel my feelings, but I remain committed to living the truth I know. Regardless of behavior, every person is a divine being, a living expression of God. I call upon my divine faculties of love, faith, and strength to guide my next steps. No matter how another person responds, I remain centered in God. My efforts make a difference. Peace between individuals creates peace within families, in communities, and among the nations of the world. And the affirmation is, the effect of righteousness will be peace, and the result of righteousness, quietness, and trust forever. Isaiah 32, 17. Thanks, Jim, for sharing daily word for today. And so as we've listened to these inspiring words, I just invite you now to join with me in moving into a time of mindfulness, what we call prayer, meditation, in whatever way works well for you. And this so uh, for those of you here who are here in the room, if you care to close your eyes, to relax, to set both feet on the floor, to reconnect to planet Earth, to the flow of the divine nature of God. And for those of you at home also to relax wherever you are. And so I'll begin by toning our singing bowl. And as I do so, be aware of how the energetic vibration touches your body, how you feel it in your physical body and also how you feel it in your spiritual knowingness. Let it roll over you and through you and be in the space of the heart chakra that this toning bowl vibrates at. And so I invite you to breathe, knowing that this is a gift we each give to ourselves, this time apart. And recognizing that in our material world, we are often distracted by things and outer circumstances. And we forget to allow ourselves to re-engage in the heart of our being, in that which is sensory, in that which is a breath of life, in that which is the presence of the flow of God, natural, ever ongoing. So I invite you to continue breathing and allowing and just recognizing whatever weight you may be carrying on your shoulder. Just brush it off and recenter. For in this moment, in this now moment, we are connecting in to the oneness of spirit. And it transcends all the thoughts that run through our minds. It allows us that respite from the busyness of our material world in order to be embraced and immersed in that which is pure beingness that which is the light and the love of spirit, of God, of the natural flow of our universe.
And so we breathe and we recognize that this is the breath of life, the breath of God moving through us. And we focus on that breath, allowing it to regenerate and renew every cell in our body, knowing that that breath brings light, it brings healing love. We allow it to move down through the center of our being, our solar plexus. We allow it to move down through our legs and out into Mother Earth. And then we breathe up again. <clears throat> and allow it to flow out our arms, recognizing that this creates the cross that I spoke of last week at Easter that is representative of the material world and the spiritual world and where it connects in the very heart of our being. It is a symbol that is ageless and goes far back beyond Christianity and is a sacred and a spiritual symbol that we can hold in our consciousness, recognizing the heart of our being is at the very center of that. And so we allow ourselves to breathe into that fully and completely And as we exhale, we release and let go. Anything that impedes the smooth flow of infinite spirit. Any thoughts that distract us, any worries or fears or concerns, for they are just thoughts. And though we place such permanence on our thinking and our thoughts, in reality, what is infinite and perpetual is only spirit, light, love, grace, wisdom. So we allow ourselves to just be in that experience not figuring it out, not having to know or understand, but to recognize in the depth of our being that similar resonance of oneness, like attracting like. One of the principles of our spiritual universe. We resonate at that energetic level of wholeness, of grace, of forgiveness, of love. <clears throat> and as we feel this experience, as we just immerse ourselves in this energy, we rest for a moment in silence allowing this natural flow of pure essence to renew and bless and heal and uplift. And we open ourselves now in the silence.
and as we have allowed ourselves to receive, as we have been infilled and blessed, we now let that light and that presence shine forth. to touch the hearts of those around us, our family, our friends, our communities, and out into our world. And so we take this moment to surround our prayer box in light. And as we do so, we know the power of the breath, of the spoken word that manifests forth and so we speak aloud the names of those we would especially bless at this time, and we hold our prayer box in that light of healing also. Karen and Bob, Richard and Jolene, Sue Ann, Mary Lou and Jim, Teresa, Wanda, Warren and Joyce, Vicki and Evan, Bill, Unity of Michiana, Unity Worldwide Ministries and World Headquarters, our community of Michiana, out into our world, our world leaders. We send this light and this love in the fullest intention of wholeness and oneness. Peace over all. We say thank you, God. So this, uh, this is one of my favorite songs, so I perform it f fairly often. And it's probably some of you know it a little bit, so if you want to sing along, I'm always happy when you sing along. Mm -hmm. um, it always helps. Yeah, we do need to set this up a little bit. And I'm not a talker, so I can't really, <laughs> not really good at that part of it. Um, It works. Let's see here.
You will do amazing things with Choice Age New Daydream. With every step, a step you take, bless the joy that you redeem me. The reason you live is there in every gift you give. Your life, love your dream. Will do a me. Amazing, amazing. You will do a me. Amazing, you will do amazing things. For the choices you will go, and the people you will know, don't worry when or when or how. You don't need to know that now You're on the right track Don't need to look ahead or back Just, just enjoy what this new day brings You will do amazing things Amazing Amazing, you will do amazing things. Amazing, amazing, you will do amazing things. Out. Yeah, here and now let your mind rest for a little while sometimes deepest dances come when you're out there having fun so close your eyes and take a breath and smile Amazing, amazing, you will do amazing things. Amazing, amazing, you will do amazing. John, that's one of my favorite songs oh, too. Really and good. you know, Jana is so so amazing. And you know, we used to have her occasionally when we did um, the Posse Paloozas in concert, and so she'd be here with Karen Drecker and Richard McDeesey. And oh my gosh, um, there's just something about the power in those words, and and it lifts us. So I don't know about you, but the horses song, I'm going to be driving along and <laughs> singing amazing things. So. Let it just move through you this week and, and, and inspire you. So um, my talk title for today is The Renewal Promise of Springtime. And I wanted for us, you know, following Easter and, and, and the, that experience of the resurrection or the renewal to move on into talking a little bit more fully about nature and God and springtime. And for those of us who are here in Michiana, 
boy, we've had a couple of wonderful days of, what, 81 degrees, I think, yesterday and the day before, and sunshine, and now we have clouds and rain, and, and it, you know, it's so fascinating to experience springtime and to realize that throughout history, humankind has connected to God through nature and the experiences of being in nature. And I talked last Sunday a little bit about um, pagan rituals and the ways that people connected. Uh, the, the pagan word simply referred to those people who did not follow the Jewish teachings. So it came to have sort of a negative connotation and, and yet it far preceded even Judaism in the ways that people recognized that there was something greater than themselves. And they saw it in nature, from prehistoric man who saw the lightning in the sky, who saw a volcano erupt, who, who saw the, the waves coming in from the ocean. See, Nature is all around us, and we can recognize that the essence of God, which is not a person that is an intellectual construct, but that God is the essence of all creation and all beingness, reveals the natural order and the flow of our universe through nature. That's how we learn. And... And there's a tendency pretty much for us as humans in our material world to seek to know God intellectually, right? We're going to read all the books. We're going to figure it all out. We're going to pray the right way. We're going to do all these things. And yet from time immortal, humanity, all of us beings, us soul beings, have had a longing and to connect in ways that are not satisfied through our intellect and through our outer understanding of God. And so from the get-go, as humanity, we have understood that nature and God are interrelated and that we can learn so much. And even Jesus taught a lot of his parables and his lessons utilizing nature because it was what people understood. Uh, Beth Norcross, she is a founder and executive director of Center for um, Spirituality and Nature. Doesn't that sound awesome? She says, the natural world is our first way of knowing God. Not only is nature part of our biological DNA, it is in our spiritual DNA as well. Long before there were synagogues and mosques and churches, our first way of experiencing or knowing God was outdoors. And Jesus often used familiar nature imagery to get his point across to the people of his time. In nature, the experience of spirit is unmediated and unfettered, uncomplicated by dogma and doctrine. So, Friends, I want to just invite us into breathing, into being, into recognizing as we seek, as metaphysicians, as spiritual seekers, to connect to God in, in ways that are, make a difference in our lives that support us, that how we can do this is not through figuring things out, it is more a matter of connecting into spirit, to allowing the flow of that which is natural and which is all around us, to bring a wisdom that we may not recognize otherwise. In Romans 1.20, from Scripture, it says, Ever since the creation of the world, God's eternal power and divine nature, invisible though they are, invisible, we want to put our hands on it, right? We want to touch it, and then it's real. That, that, that eternal power and divine na nature is invisible. Invisible though they are, have been seen and understood through the things God has made. 
So we know that when we're speaking of God, we're not speaking of a man in the sky. We are speaking of the, the natural order of the universe of creation creating. And it goes on in Job 12, 7 through 10. But ask the animals, and they will teach you. The birds of the air, and they will tell you. Ask the plants of the earth, and they will teach you. And the fish of the sea will declare to you. Who among all these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? In other words, who in all of that, in all of nature, doesn't experience the flow of of natural, eternal, divine power and spirit. In his hand, in this flow of spirit, is the life of every living thing and the breath of every human being. Whoa. You know, so sometimes it's easy to, uh, uh, springtime especially, it's really easy to appreciate uh, that renewal sense, which is what springtime teaches us. And all of the seasons... All of the seasons are an important aspect to help remind us as humanity, as spiritual humanity, how we traverse through life. Just like the message that Jesus taught us in going through what was written as the, the crucifixion and the resurrection. And he was doing a, a, a metaphorical lesson to say, there are the seasons we blossom, we grow, we, we are nourished, and, and through spring and summer, and then comes the fall. And then there's a time to go more within, to allow that which was to fall like the fall leaves, to go into that time of winter, where in a time of gestation, a time of, of being quiet and open to that which we are moving through. That was the time for Jesus in the tomb, representative of that story. And then Jesus arose on the other side, and that's what we have talked about, is that capacity in, in our lives to continually traverse the ebb and the flow of that which nature teaches us. Whether it's a small little thing that's happening in your life. So I'm going to have you think of something right now that's just irking the heck out of you. You can post it if you want, but you probably don't want to put that down in writing. But it's just, oh, okay. And then notice how much your mind goes on and on and on and on and on with it, right? And, and we forget... To trust in spirit, to trust that there is a guidance, that this is not just, you know, like a, a stone in our shoe to irritate us, but it is an opportunity to wake us up, to invite us to see things differently, to let go of what has been, to step into that which is newly becoming. And so springtime is this wonderful expression and a wonderful way of teaching us about this process of renewal of having taken the time to be patient, to allow the flow of energy to move us through whatever is irksome in your life right now. And then to begin to show us a new way of being. Um, Rachel Carson, who's environmental science author, says, those who contemplate the beauty of the earth Find reserves of strength that will endure as long as life lasts. There is something infinitely healing in the repeated refrains of nature. The assurance that dawn comes after night and spring after winter. And I love this quote also by Albert uh, Camus, who's a French philosopher. In the depth of winter, I finally learned that within me, there lay an invincible summer, friends. So as I'm inviting us into recognizing this renewal promise of springtime, as, as we look, how many of you have had some flowers come up? Have you seen your, your daffodils, the tulips are blossoming on the trees, the little buds are coming out, and, and, and it's, it's just amazing to experience that 
if we allow ourselves to just be with. And we don't take the time because we do have, you know, our lives are fairly busy. And we sort of forget to, to be patient and take time out to allow ourselves to be in this process of shifting, changing, growing. In scripture from James 5, verse 7, it says, Be patient, therefore, beloved, until the coming of the Lord. Meaning, be patient to allow the process of what is going through you, the irksome things, the challenging things, are those times when we are learning, when we are facing life different, when we are required to drop the fall leaves, the ways we have always looked at things, when we are required to take time apart, to be open to a, something brand new birthing itself in us, in order that we can walk through the other side. It goes on to say, the farmer waits for the precious crop from the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and the late rains, friends. In our lives, with instant technology and, and all the instant gratification that we experience, we get caught up in that. And we get caught up in, in our cell phones and in our computers and, and, and even in communicating with people like that. When was the last time, because now, thank goodness, we're more able to hug people and, and be with people. When was the last time, instead of texting someone, you actually picked up the phone and called them. That's a first step. You can hear their voice. And then gathered with them in some way. It's, that's what's wonderful about spiritual community. And it's wonderful that we can see uh, your, uh, that you can see our faces and that you can also post, those of you who are online, anything that you choose to share with us so that we can feel connected in. And there's many layers and levels of how we do that. But it's great to set aside all of our technology long enough to be in the essence of nature, to see it flowing around us, to experience what it teaches us. Albert Einstein says, look deep into nature and then you will understand everything better. Now, I talk to Google a lot, so, you know, Google tells me a whole lot of stuff. But it is not in the same way, is it, as when you put your feet in the grass or your hands in the soil and, and you plant some new herbs or flowers. It is an entirely different way of knowing and experiencing. Uh, Danny uh, DePiro, she, um, at Positively Present, she's an Instagram blogger and author. She's been on, on um, Ellen DeGeneres' show. She's been on Oprah. She's, she's quite well known. And she says, spring is, and I'm going to read these to you, so just like listen in your heart. Spring is the reminder that delicate shoots must push through dirt. The realization of how much darkness we've survived. Spring is the time of indecision, restless clouds, and soft sunshine. It's the knowledge that not everything blooms at the same time. I love that because I expect, okay, spring up right now. Come on, let's go. And then they come here and then another plant there. And, oh, that's right. That's the no natural order of of nature, of the world, and then I can allow that to be the natural order of myself as I allow, as I am patient, as, as I just recognize the spirit of, of infinite God flowing through me. Um, she says, spring is the astonishment of regrowth of the forgotten awakening, and the last is spring is the season of hope of trying before you know you'll succeed. You just see those little plants pushing, you know, up through. Have, have you ever seen a little sprout and it comes up like planted seedlings and stuff? And, and you think, how do they do that? They're all down in there, dark and the, planted in the soil. And what is this amazing miracle of th this plant that, that reaches up towards the sun? 
And that too is the divine nature of who we each are individually. Ongoing renewal, the natural order of the universe is evidenced in springtime. And now it's raining outside because um, we talked about farmers being patient. So it's, it's raining on these lovely blossoms that yesterday were kind of thirsty because it was so warm. I don't know what it's like in the other areas where you people are um, online, but we don't, we are so in, in cased most of the time in our human intellectual experience of our world. And we just do not value the mystical experience that can be had spiritually all the time if we but set some of that aside for a moment and return to nature and see the messages that it brings to us. <clears throat> George Washington Carver was an amazing, prominent black agricultural scientist and an inventor. And he recognized that there, so many of the cotton crops, the cotton crops, were depleting the soil. And then the, the crops would fail. And he recognized this, the rotational, he was the one that developed that, the rotational crop. And, and, and isn't that fascinating how we keep going back to one place and, and we just use it up until it's used up? As opposed to experiencing and trying different things and planting different thoughts and different um, ideas and, and plans that we're going to do in the soil so that it rotates the crop of what, what we bring forth into our world. So this was this amazing uh, thing that he discovered and, and began to share, and it made such a difference in our agriculture. And he says, I love to think of nature as an unlimited broadcasting station through which God speaks to us every hour if we will only tune in, friends. And that's all I'm speaking of this Sunday is of this willingness, and it certainly helps so very much in springtime because there's this joyous sense of everything coming up through the soil and renewal. And we do see that promise. We have not ever yet, to my knowledge, had a summer, a fall, and a winter, and not a spring. It's the natural order. And so remembering that helps us to know as we walk through the dark times in our lives, the challenging situations, that there will always be that light at the end of the tunnel in some way, maybe different than what we expect, but there is that light and that gift, and that is the renewal promise, and springtime evidences that for us. Liz Chase, um, a special author, says, Hope is not pretending that troubles don't exist. It is the trust that they will not last forever, that hurts will be healed and difficulties overcome. It is faith that a source of strength and renewal lies within us to lead us through the dark and into the sunshine. So friends, what's ours to do is to to get out in nature, to experience it, to be willing to take some time apart, to let ourselves be open to the flow of upliftment and renewal that that brings. And as this says in scripture from uh, Zechariah 10, verse 1, ask the Lord for rain in the springtime. Do we ask? Do we ask? No. It's like, remember to trust and have faith and you know in the times where it's darkness in the times through the challenge in the times of gestation where we're learning where we're being patient then beginning to ask the lord for the for the rain in the springtime it is the lord who sends the thunderstorms he gives showers of rain to all people and plants of the field to everyone wow friends so let's spend these next 
few weeks, this next couple of months, in that experience of recognizing nature and God in nature and the lessons that it teaches us and the reminder that though it may seem the darkest it has ever been for you, that there is a dawn on the other side as we open ourselves to the nourishment of the physical reign of our planet, but also the nourishment of spirit that rains down upon our soul, that brings us a sense of confidence, a sense of wisdom, a sense of how to move forward into that which is next. And so I will close today with a quote. Um, I love Sarah Van Branick. She's a wonderful, simple abundance. She wrote the book Simple Abundance and She's, she's quite well known, and, and she's a best-selling author and a philanthropist, public speaker. She says, expect to have hope rekindled. Expect your prayers to be answered in wondrous ways. The dry seasons in life do not last. The spring rains will come again. Friends, go out and, and run through the raindrops. Put your feet in the grass. Dig down into the earth. Go for a walk. Just allow yourself to be with nature and to recognize that that is God speaking in every bird of the sky, in every animal, in every plant, in the water, in all of the elements. It is speaking directly to the soul of our being of which we are all a part. And we can give thanks for those lessons that we learn and for the inspiration that guides us forward with hope and with faith. So that concludes uh, my talk for today. And um, just two little announcements on happening events. I'm going to ask Tim to come up too. Just going to remind everyone we continue with our Wednesday group that meets by Zoom. Uh, Susan sends out uh, the Zoom link by email on Wednesday. So if you do not have that, just ask her to send that. You can come in and we can we see each other's faces. And we have usually we discuss a certain paragraph and and then we go into meditation, and it's just a wonderful time of sharing with each other. So if you can, join us for uh, that on Wednesdays uh, from 6 to about 7 o'clock. And then I'm going to turn it over to you for... So we talked several weeks ago about spring cleanup, and I know that the weather is going to be turning cold here for a day or so, but the extended forecast shows for next weekend that we may have an opportunity to do that. And so... Next Sunday, after service, we're going to go outside and do a little bit of cleanup. Um, for those of you who are here in person today, you may have noticed that, the, that uh, the lawn keeper was here, and he did a fantastic job cleaning up and mowing and making it look nice. But we'd still like to do a little bit extra above and beyond that. We'd like to maybe plant a few flowers here and there and things like that. And also, next Saturday is Earth Day. Is that right? And... Um, so we celebrate as a church community we celebrate that on sunday so um on sunday being earth day it's a good uh, time to get in get your hands dirty a little bit and and enjoy earth for what it is and if you would like you're more than welcome to just come along wear your casual clothes and maybe take a walk in the park across the street or something like that so please join us we'd love to have you thank you yeah yeah, next Sunday we'll be uh, talking about um, Earth Day, and uh, so I usually celebrate that on the Sunday closest to Earth Day, and, and uh, it's real close because Earth Day is Saturday, and, and so um, it's a wonderful time leading forth from the lesson today uh, around nature and then recognizing that, that uh, we are the caretakers of this beautiful planet. So... Come and join us. It's a wonderful service, and and um, and make your pledges and commitments to protecting our Earth and being a good caretaker. And then and then a wonderful time to clean some things up and go for a walk and 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 share that all together. So thanks, Tim, for that announcement. So uh, that brings me to our time of celebrating and receiving uh, your love offering gifts, your contributions that are the sole support of this church um, and its endeavors out into the world, you are the church. And so I will invite you to hold in your consciousness the awareness of the flow of abundance and that God is our source. 
And, and as we give, we receive. And you can do that on uh, unitymichiana.org, or you can do that on your phone app. Uh, just click the, the Give button, and it's wonderful. You can go right in and do that. Those of you here, we have the offering basket in the back. We also have those QR codes now. I think you can see that online, and we have it in the, um, out, out in the fellowship hall. It, you know, if you have not done that yet, it's really a hoot. It's fun. Get your get your phone, take a little picture of the QR code, and it goes right in, and you can give thanks for the, um, uh, give an extra little love offering for our, our wonderful fellowship that, that uh, Tim and, and Alex do such a great job with, or a donation to the church, or um, it's, it's just really fun to this to be able to use this technology. So if you haven't done it, try that. So just as, as we hold our hands like this, it represents that in, infinite symbol that we know is ever ongoing, giving and receiving, that is all a part of the same, same expression of allness. And so will you join with me in our affirmation? I give and receive with gratitude in my heart, knowing God is my infinite supply of prosperous good. And so as you give your contributions, your love offerings, and as you hold in your heart the joyous affirmation of infinite abundance, together we celebrate that which we create, that which we contribute to, that which we are a part of. And we say thank you, God, for these gifts that manifest infinite good forward. And so it is. Amen. And I'll invite you to stand and we will sing our peace song and we'll end with our prayer for protection. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, a peace that was meant to be. With God, our Creator, gently are we. Let us walk with each other in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me, and let's see our moment now. With every step I take, let this be my solemn vow. Light of God surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us, the power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. And so it is, and so we let it be. With open hearts, we go out and play in the grass and in the raindrops, planting flowers, and enjoy, enjoy, friends. Thanks for joining. Thanks to all of you here. Blessings in your week to come. No. Mm -hmm.
Yes, we cradle the sorrow, and we stoked all the fires with fear. Now these bones that lie empty in hollow are ready for gladness to cheer. My night and my day will spot and will play. As the dance is over to be Sleep blows the breath of the morning away As we follow the heron home So long may you sing of the salmon The slow-scented sound of your the north wind delivers its sermon With earth and salt water and stone My night and my day will sport and will play And delight as the moon dances over the bay He blows a breath of the morning away as we follow the air in home. My nights and my day will sport and will play and delight while the dawn dances over the bay. Sleep blows a breath of the morning away as we follow the air in